The video head traces its path down the recorded video track. How well the video head traces this path is due to the linearity of the tape path. If the tape path is nonlinear, the video head will drift off track resulting in a loss of the playback signal. This of course causes a disturbance in the picture monitor. This effect can be compensated to some extent with the front panel tracking control. However, performing the tracking adjustment with a standardized alignment tape on each playback transport in your facility will assure that these constant readjustments will be kept to a minimum. There are many elements that derive this tape path. One element is the tape path created by a narrow shelf of metal that extends around the scanner and forms the helical angle. This rabbit guide, or lead line, guides the lower edge of tape and controls the linearity for most of the track. It is important for this guide to be kept very clean. Distortions or uneven wear could cause an RF envelope display such as this. The other factors involved are the entrance and exit guides that control the linearity at the beginning and end of the video track. The Betacam transport employs three guides for the entrance. Tape guide one, Tape guide two, and the tension regulator. Tape guide three and tape guide four are used to control the exit and are placed on opposite sides of the audio block. On the entrance side, the upper edge of tape is controlled by the upper flanges of the tension regulator and tape guide 2. Tape guide 1 and the rabbit guide control the lower edge of the tape. And so the tape is fed accurately to the scanner. On the exit side, the upper edge is controlled by tape guide 3 and tape guide 4 controls the lower. The tape then continues past the capstan and returns to the take up reel. The first step of the tracking procedure is to check the tension of the tape path. The playback transport specification is 45 grams at the entrance of the scanner. This specification can be measured with a tenolometer or a tension scale. The tension regulator operating position and forward back tension adjustments should be performed to meet the specification. In addition, the tension should be equal at the upper and lower edges of tape around the rest of the threading ring. This is specified by the tape run adjustment procedure listed in your manual. In step two, the entrance linearity will be adjusted by monitoring the off-tape video signal while playing back a Sony Betacam alignment tape. The test point to be measured is listed in the tracking procedure. Each guide is adjusted in turn, starting with the tension regulator, then tape guide 2, And finally, tape guide one. Since a tension regulator is to be adjusted first, it is important that tape guide one and tape guide two do not influence the tape path.
Clearances are made where the flanges of tape guide 1 and tape guide 2 contact the tape's edges by turning the adjusting nut at the top of the guide. The tension regulator's height now determines the entrance waveform. It should be adjusted so the waveform is flat at the entrance side. If an error exists, pressing down or pushing up on the tape will indicate whether to raise or lower this guide. In addition, slightly turning the tracking control of the VTR will decrease the waveform and magnify the error. Because the tension regulator controls the upper edge, you must make sure the tape contacts the upper flange of this guide. This is controlled by the slantness adjustment of the tension regulator. In addition, the tape tension at the upper and lower edge should be equal. This is also controlled by the slantness adjustment. Tape guide 2 is adjusted next. Since this guide also controls the upper edge, you must assure contact at the upper flange by raising the tension regulator slightly from the last adjustment. This causes a slight distortion in the waveform. Tape guide 2 will correct this error by forcing down the tape path. Adjust the flange of tape guide 2 so that the waveform is flat. Check that there is no curl at the flange of tape guide 2. Tape guide 1 is used to control the lower edge of tape. Since the tape path is now stable at the upper edge, tape guide 1 is adjusted so that it contacts the lower edge of tape without tape curl. Each guide should be locked in place by the set screw at the top of each guide. Check for any distortions by turning the tracking knob back and forth slightly on the VTR. The envelope should remain flat. In step three, the linearity of the exit side is adjusted. This procedure is very similar to that used for the entrance side. Tape guide 3 controls the upper edge and tape guide 4 controls the lower. Tape guide 3 should have a clearance at the upper flange and tape guide 4 should be adjusted so that there is a slight nonlinearity on the exit side. Tape guide 3 is then adjusted to correct this nonlinearity and make the envelope flat. In addition, the leading guide roller on the threading ring should be adjusted so that the tape contacts the upper flange. As a final check, the tracking knob should be turned slightly back and forth and the waveform should remain flat. In addition, all guides should be locked down and checked for tape curl. If this procedure does not work for a BVW-40, don't call me, I'll call you. This is Sony Broadcast, over and out.